Many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. I would know. I am one of them, the official wrote in the Times. We believe our first duty is to this country, and the president continues to act in a manner that is detrimental to the health of our republic, the official added. Trump wants to know who's talking. He wants to know who talked to Woodward, an administration official told CNN. He is said to suspect former National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster and former Chief Economic Advisor Gary Cohn, as among those who talked to The Washington Post reporter for his tone fear, which comes out Tuesday. Several names are being thrown around as the possible anonymous writer in the New York Times piece. Online chatter Wednesday quickly focused on Vice President Mike Pence's armchair language analysts focused on one line describing the late sen. John McCain is a lodestar for restoring honor to public life and our national dialogue. That word, lodestar, is a favorite of the vice president, but a senior White House official told Daily Mail. Com that suspicion is not focused on him or anyone in his office following a frank discussion among the VP's senior staff. Share this article share the official suspect's lodestar was purposely included in the op-ed to throw journalists off the scent. When it comes to negative stories involving the West Wing, the president looks at how forcefully aides respond them. Former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson never denied calling Trump a moron, and a former senior White House official told CNN that Trump never forgave him for it. Tillerson was fired in March. The president also has noticed the silence from several other former administration officials when it comes to making denials about Woodward's book, which has reached the number one spot on Amazon. Trump has personally slammed both Woodward's book and the gutless writer of the Times opinion piece. The White House issued a strong response to the Times piece. Nearly 62 million people voted for President Donald J. Trump in 2016, earning him 306 electoral college votes versus 232 for his opponent. None of them voted for a gutless, anonymous source to the failing New York Times. We are disappointed, but not surprised, that the paper chose to publish this pathetic, reckless, and selfish op-ed. This is a new low for the so-called paper of record, and it should issue an apology, White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said in a statement. This is just another example of the liberal media's concerted effort to discredit the president, she added. She also called on the writer to resign. The individual behind this piece has chosen to deceive, rather than support, the duly elected president of the United States. He is not putting country first, but putting himself and his ego ahead of the will of the American people. This coward should do the right thing and resigned. Several observers noted the Times referred to the author as he in a tweet about the piece, prompting many to assume the op-ed was written by a man. But Danielle Rhodes Ha, a spokesperson for the paper, told Business Insider this was a mistake. Senior opinion editors know the identity of the official, as we pointed out in our editor's note, Ha said. The tweet was drafted by someone who is not aware of the author's identity, including the gender, so the use of he was an error. 
Trump expressed publicly his pleasure that White House Chief of Staff John Kelly and Defense Secretary Jim Mattis issued forceful denials on quotes attributed to them by Woodward. Jen. Mattis has come out very, very strongly. He was insulted by the remarks that were attributed to him, Trump said. John Kelly, same thing. He was insulted by what they said. He couldn't believe what they said. Woodward quoted Kelly slamming Trump after he blew a fuse during a meeting. He's an idiot. It's pointless to try to convince him of anything. He's gone off the rails, Kelly said, in Woodward's telling. We're in crazy town. I don't even know why any of us are here. This is the worst job I've ever had. Kelly fired back at the claims, saying in a statement, the idea that I ever called the president is not true, in fact it's exactly the opposite. Doc, this is both a pathetic attempt to smear people close to President Trump and distract from his many successes. In another episode described in Fear, Trump questioned the utility of U.S. early warning systems in Alaska to identify a nuclear attack from North Korea 